I know these videos are pretty much going to be back to back, but um, in my defense, I didn't know that certain features were available now, like backing up and restoring applications and stuff like that your, while your IX application status set. That's supported now. Apparently, it's been fixed and stable, but the reason why I didn't implement it on the last video, which was like, <laughs> like six days before this, is because I didn't know that it was working. I didn't think it was because we had people come into Discord and they would complain that uh, they restored their application status set and they were still having problems and other applications would launch and stuff like that. Well, I tested it out and made my own script and everything's working. So, and, and my buddy told me that he used uh, True Tools Restore Function 2 and that worked. So I was just like, well, what the heck? I don't know what that's all about. But, um, so I decided to add the feature and I just figured I'd just make a new video as well. But let's go right into it. The very first thing that I want to show off is just the update feature. Just because I'm going to be doing this video again in whole. I want to show off everything again. So the way that you run this script is you just do a bash. And then your script, which is just heavyscript.sh. And then... Your arguments need to be ran in a certain order. If someone can help me with this, I know someone is out there <laughs> that's smart. I've already had a couple of buddies uh, try to give me ideas and stuff like that, but I still haven't um, had any success right now. Is But all these commands need to be ran in a specific order. Otherwise, they, uh, or not, not these commands, but the arguments need to be specified in a, in a specific order. Otherwise, they do not work. I am using... Uh, get ops uh, and a case statement so if you guys know how to do that please help me out or at least send me like a stack overflow or something like that okay but so then we don't have to do this but anyway if you want to ignore an application I'm going to go ahead and ignore jacket and I'll go ahead and add another one this is kind of another like uh, weird quirk is you have to do attack I for every application that you want to ignore. So let's go to our applications list and we'll do um, we'll do jacket tack one two three. Whoa, what is that? So if you look at this, we're ignoring jacket and we're ignoring jacket one, two, three, and then we're going to set a custom timeout of 150. I'll show you what that is in just a minute. And then we're going to back up up to 14 backups of heavy script anyway. And I'll show you what that is in a minute as well. And then, uh, these last few commands, um, obviously you want to sync first and then update, and then you print your Docker images just to help clean up everything. But just remember, these arguments need to be ran in a specific order. And if you're doing multiple ignores, you have to do multiple I arguments, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's say the number of backups was set to 14. And then it will say your backup name right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the output. The very first thing it did was backup, like I said, there's the name of the backup, and then it's going to sync all your catalogs. This takes a while, so please wait. And then it will show you the number of updates available, and then it will show you the, uh, the timeout that was set. We set that timeout right up here, and then it'll show you the application name in each of these rows. And then remember it's at five, so one, two, three, four, and five. And then since jacket was on the ignore list, it is ignored and then it skips and goes to the next application. So jacket one, and the jacket one was stopped. Uh, as you can see here, it still is stopped. We'll refresh this page. Yep, so jacket one and jacket are both stopped, but jacket was ignored and then jacket one was stopped. So since it was stopped, it begins the stop loop and then it returns to the stopped state. And then it'll say stopped as soon as it is stopped. And the reason I do this is because I'm assuming that any application that you had stopped prior to an update, you want stopped after an update. This is one of the things that I wanted to change about TrueTool. It's just, I don't know Python. So I 
I wrote this whole script in Bash instead. And um, added a few things and stuff like that. But another thing that it does during the stop loop, it's going to wait until your application is active. And uh, this was recommended to me by Stravos because initially I would just send the kill command as soon as the application finished updated. Updating. While that's an issue with some applications like Nextcloud and stuff like that that have initialization scripts as soon as they turn on. Uh, since Nextcloud and some, some of those other applications don't work half the time anyway, uh, after you update them they'll just never work again and stuff like that. I do not want to kill those applications during their initialization scripts because they could be migrating databases or moving stuff around or something like that, right? Or doing something important. And then I kill it in the middle of that while it's trying to deploy uh, and become active. And then it could cause some issues or some sort of corruption or something like that. So we wait until the application is active. And then as soon as the application is active, we're going to assume all the initialization scripts and stuff like that are done. And then we'll go ahead and send the uh, uh, replicate to zero command or whatever. Okay, and then both Jacket and uh, Jacket123 were on the ignore list. So those should not be updated. So this is not updated and this is not updated. And then it will prune your Docker images um, and then it'll show you the amount that it pruned. But I want to change a few things this time. I'm going to change this to a 12 because I only want 12 backups. And I'm going to take these two applications off the list. I changed my mind. I do want to update those. So we'll go ahead and run this. Actually, wait. I will change the timeout to 150. We'll keep the timeout at 150. And then take off the sync. Just because I want to show you guys this. And we'll do that. Okay, and you'll notice a few things are different this time. So we had to delete your oldest backup, which was, and then this is the name of it. This is to remain in the 12 backup backups range you set, which I did set 12 backups right here. And you do have to specify a number after TACB. There is no default. Uh, a good number to go by is like uh, 14. I think that's what the default was for uh, true tool, but uh, you can do uh, whatever you want, obviously. But you'll see here, it will delete your oldest backup. So let's go ahead and run a tech R. This will just list all your backups. And then if we look at the name of this one, 17, 18, and 44. Well, as you can see, that would be older than this one because it's 17, 19, 17, 20, and then it'll continue to rise. And then just as a little bit more proof, we'll go ahead and just change the backup number to, I don't know, eight. And we'll take the rest of this stuff out because we just want to uh, just back up our applications and show you that backing up only the oldest ones does actually work. So this was just to prove that this does actually delete only your oldest backups. Um, and it just places these into an array. So don't worry about the, the actual order. But as you can see, it, uh, it started here and deleted this one first, um, and then it will delete the uh, the 37, then 2041, that one's deleted, and then 2003, that one's deleted, and then this one right here, which is the very last one. Okay, so there's the number, and then we'll run it one more time, and then this should be the one that gets deleted. So there's the backup that I just created, and then there's the backup that it just deleted, which is heavy script. 2022, 4, whatever, 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 18, 12, 30, 18, 12, 30. That's pretty much it for updating applications. There's only one other thing that I need to explain. So there was a little bit of confusion on my last video on what uh, the difference between lowercase u and uppercase u is. So lowercase u will look for any change in the very first uh, version, which is this, just this. One of these is the applications version, and then one of these is just the true charts helm chart version or whatever. Lowercase u will look for a change in either this number or this number right here. These are considered your major versions, whatever the very first value is, uh, no matter the amount of decimals or anything like that, it's just the very first number in the line. And then uh, same thing with this. This is just the delimiter. 
it's just a separating uh, again the application version and then the true charts version of the application and then if there is any change whatsoever if this goes from a letter to uh, a number if this goes from latest to an actual sember version like this because i know valheim and other applications will go by uh, latest and then this will be covered by latest it's literally looking for just any change whatsoever if this is not equal to this and if this is not equal to this then it's going to assume that that's a major major version update and it's going to skip that application and ask you to update it manually for uppercase u it just doesn't give a crap it's like dude i don't care about all these numbers and stuff i don't this doesn't mean anything to me and it will update these no matter what so even if it is a major update version or anything like that it's going to update Okay, well now that we got done uh, updating all of our applications and backing them up and stuff like that, I want to show off the restore feature now. So we'll do a tac R that just stands for restore. And then it will list off all of your restore points, uh, specifically by heavy script. And note that it does start with the number zero. This is also something that I'm wanting to fix. I want it to start with the number one. It's just, it's kind of hard to do that right now. So anyway, let's say I want to just grab the very latest release because this goes by year, month, day, hour, minute, and then second. So if you look at this, this is the very latest release. Um, so I want to restore the very latest release. So we'll go ahead and do this, type in zero. And then it'll give you this prompt. This is not guaranteed to work because like I said in the very beginning of the video, I didn't even think that this worked in the first place. And we have had people say that they've restored and it doesn't work. So this is totally up to you. This is supposed to be a last case scenario. Uh, consider rolling back your applications instead if possible. And then if you don't know what that is, it's just coming to your applications list and then hitting the rollback here and then hitting rollback snapshots and then roll back. Because if you don't know, this, the backup feature that was added to the script and that is implemented in TrueTool is taking a snapshot of IX applications, this entire data set. So if you restore, you're not restoring one application or two applications or just your applications. You're restoring the entire data set. Keep that in mind. That's why this is <laughs> a last case scenario. Um, but it does work so but I'm still gonna add the warning in there because I don't want to be I don't want you guys to be mad at me if, if this doesn't work because I'm going to show you in this video it does work um, but you have chosen to restore and then it will show you whatever you chose to restore just make sure that it does match up to the one that you chose in this case it does I chose number zero this is number zero and this is number zero would you like to continue uh, you can type no you've chosen no killing script good luck uh because obviously if you're in this scenario we're even considering restoring that sucks um and hopefully you get it figured out but we'll go ahead and hit yes starting back up this will take a long time and it does take a long time and then of course you can check the uh the task manager up here and check the progress here as well but make sure you don't control c out of this make sure you do not close this don't do anything just leave it open and just leave it the way it is. Don't touch anything. Just wait until it's done. And if you take a look at this, looks like it finished. So we'll go to the application screen and wait for these to populate. Here they are, but they're going to be stuck in the dis in the deploying state for a little while. It's going to pull all these container images and stuff like that and then start them up. So it's going to take a minute. Okay, and after waiting some time, it looks like all of our applications are active, so let's open them up. That one's working. That one's good to go. This one's good to go. This one's good to go. And this one's good to go. Okay, cool. So the restore feature obviously works. Uh, hopefully you guys can use it, or hopefully you never have to use it, but you can if you ever need to. So the next feature has been in the script for a while. And it's mounting PVC data. If you're new to TrueNAS scale, this is something that's going to be completely foreign to you and it's going to be super weird. Uh, but I'm sure you already know that 
most of your storage except for your host paths and stuff like that like if you go here uh, if it says pvc this is in this is within the container and obviously you can't see that uh, unless you mount it to your system it's really really weird if you're not used to it it's really nice for things like uh, uh rolling back and stuff like that but if you are not used to it you're like where the hell are all my files and stuff like that well this will help you out so you just have to type in we'll just go to bash and then attack m this is just to initiate the mounting feature and then you can choose number one to mount and then it will list off all your namespaces, um, all your volumes, and all the names of your applications. So I want to mount jacket123 and jacket123. Option 2 and option 5 to clarify. So we'll do number 2 first. And then setting default timeout to 300, change timeout with tac T. So you can go ahead and pass a tack T to this as well and put in like 150 if you want to. Just wait uh, 150 seconds maximum for your applications to uh, to finish stopping before it kills a script. But let's check it, take a look at the output. Uh, it says waiting 299 seconds for a jacket to be stopped. That's because the default timeout is 300 and then it'll say mounting. And then it'll put this here and then um, and then it says where it mounted to, so mount, temporary jacket123 config, and then it'll say whether or not it was mounted. Unmount with the following command, so you can go ahead and run this whole thing, and then this is partially why I made the script, because look at this. Especially if you show like a new guy this, you're like, dude, what in the hell even is this? Um, this does not make any sense. Even like tank, you don't even preface it with like the entire mount path, like mount tank it just starts with tank for some reason and i don't know it's really weird so i wanted to i wanted to improve on this and make it a lot easier uh, for myself and other people out there and it says that you can unmount with this so you can go ahead and type this in there if you need to or um use the unmount all option so i'm going to go ahead and run this again because i want to get the other jacket one two three we'll choose option five this time and then if you do this manually ever, for whatever reason, you're supposed to scale your applications down to uh, stopped. You're supposed to stop your applications before you mount them. This obviously waits until your, all your applications are actually stopped before you mount them. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. This is already handling that part for you. The only thing it doesn't do is it does not start your applications after it unmounts everything. So we'll go ahead and just make sure those files are actually there. Mount temporary and then you'll see those two are there and then we'll go ahead and just mount one more we'll just do option three okay and then we'll go ahead and run this again and then you can see all or the new file is there and then you can see in here it's got all of its information and stuff like that. So you can go ahead and change any of that uh, if you want to. Um, and then as soon as you get done messing with your files and copying data into them and whatever you want to do, um, you can go ahead and do tac m again and then unmount everything. Now this feature will only unmount stuff that was mounted with, uh, with the script. So don't mount something manually and then expect this to unmount it. It will not be able to unless you somehow happen to use the ex exact naming scheme that I have set, but I doubt it. But anyway, that's how mounting and stuff like that works. It's super easy, um, but this will work for things like if you need to uh, uh, migrate over your Plex database or something like that. Like for some reason Plex took a crap, you can go ahead and just mount the PVC, uh, pull your database, and then uh, spin up a new Plex application, and then mount that one, and then copy over the Plex database into your new application. Just stuff like that, or if you want to change values, like it's totally up to you, but this makes it uh, way easier than mounting it regularly, and having to remember all those just crazy long, just weird commands. So one thing I almost forgot to mention is I want to show you so if you do decide to use this backup script, 
again it's totally up to you if you um, uh, want to continue using true tool or something like that it's totally up to you if true tool is doing everything that you want it to uh, obviously you're not really going to need the script for updating or anything like that but if you are one of those people that you're looking for a little bit more control and stuff like that, you want to ignore some applications at a custom timeout, whatever, you might want to list out all of your backups. As you can see on this virtual machine, all I have is heavy script backups in here. I don't even have system updates or anything like that, but you'll probably have system updates and you'll also probably have a true tool if you've been using true tool. So there's an issue with that though. Um, you can keep the system updates in there if you want to, but uh, if you do plan on just completely switching over to this script, again, it's up to you. I'm not trying to convince you in any way. They're both great scripts and work just fine. But if you do want to switch over, you are going to want to run this command that I just uh, that I just uh, ran. I'll go ahead and leave this in the description of the video. So then you can list off all of your backup names. Um, and we're going to need this because we're going to need to delete some of these because obviously you don't want to have a bunch of uh, old snapshots and stuff like that. It's just gonna be wasting space on your hard drive. So uh, what we need to do is we need to run this first command and then find the snapshot that you wanna delete and then run this second command. So we'll go ahead and do heavy script. We'll, we'll just go ahead and delete all of this. And then let's just say I just wanna delete this one and copy that and paste that in there and what this is doing is just this is just a CLI tax C app Kubernetes delete backup and then backup name and then heavy script and then whatever your backup name is uh, within single quotes and the single quote starts at uh, before app and ends after your backup name go ahead and hit enter and then it will just say null I wish it told you something more than that but it doesn't and then uh let's see which one did we delete wow we have multiple at 39 that is so weird uh because that's 39 seconds anyway uh as you can see that one is now deleted because we had 430 so 450 and this is 58 um so we deleted 50 58 and then uh 39 but that's how you do that. Just keep that in mind. Just in case if you do uh, plan on switching over, you probably are going to want to delete all your old snapshots. So if you just got done watching a portion of the, vi of the video and you're interested in having this script on your system, I'm going to show you how to download and update that now. And then at the last section of the video, we'll just be adding it to a cron job. So we'll go ahead and add a data set first off. Let's name that script. Or I'll name it scripts. And this is just where I'm going to leave all my all my scripts and stuff like that and my uh, git pulls and whatever, git clones and stuff like that. Go back to our command prompt. As you can see, I just got done removing all that. Then we'll change directory into scripts. ls. Nothing's in here. Go ahead and clear this. And then we need to type git clone. Okay, and then we'll come to the GitHub page and then hit the code button. And then make sure it's on HTTPS, and then just hit this copy button. I'll go ahead and paste it in here. And now you see if we list, it will show the new folder for our git clone. So we can cd into that, and then ls, and then there's our script. Now in the future, if we ever want to update manually, we can go ahead and just type in git pull. As long as we didn't change anything, it should just go ahead and do this. And then it will just say up to date. And then if it gives you this prompt, you can go ahead and pull rebase. So I like to do this equal to false. So I'll go ahead and just type that in. And then we'll do another git pull. And then you don't get the error anymore. So that's how you update and you install the script. The very next thing that we want to do is we want to go to our system settings and then advanced because we're going to create a cron job go ahead and click on add next to cron jobs we'll just name this heavy script and then the command I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this okay and then we'll go back to our command prompt type in p Whoa. PWD, 
I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm like fat fingering everything by the way because my mic is like covering my keyboard so I can't see anything. It's a total pain. So that's why I'm like, I mistype everything. Uh, so uh, this is my personal cron job. I copied this and then we'll go ahead and replace this with that PWD that we just had. Just to make sure that we go to the correct directory and we're doing a git, tack c, and then pull. This is just gonna make sure that you're updating the script every single time before you run the script. And then the next is just our regular bash syntax like I showed you guys earlier. But uh, if we preface this with bash, we can also include the file path in there. So we need to replace this though with the PWD because it's mount tank scripts and then heavy script. And then within the directory of heavy script is the heavy script script. So the .sh. And then I just keep the backups equal to 14. And then I just do a sup. But uh, remember, if you want to do a uh, attack I for ignore, make sure it's in the front. Or if you do a attack T, again, make sure that this is in the front. So make sure that uh, your order and everything is fine. But for me, since I'm the one who created this script, I don't need to change the timeout because I made it for me. Uh, and I don't need to ignore anything because none of my applications are that important to where I need to update them manually. So I'm just going to do attack B uh, and equal to 14. Uh, remember to put a number after this because uh, there is no default value. You cannot add in uh, B with all this other stuff like this. You cannot do that. There is no default value. You have to specify how many backups you want because I'm not going to start deleting your backups or anything like that when you haven't told me how many you want um, because my preference could be different to yours. So I'm going to make you... I'm gonna make you put that in there. And then just do a sync and then update with the lowercase u and then a prune just to help clean up everything at, at the end. And I'm gonna run this as root. And then for the schedule, I'll go to custom. And I want this running at 04 a.m. every single day. So we won't tick any of these boxes or anything because if you don't tick any of this stuff, it's gonna assume that you want everything. It's just like an asterisk. So we'll go here, and you can click through here to see on all the days um, that it's going to be running. As you can see here, it's running Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, blah, 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 at 04 every single day. Now, if you want to get a little bit fancy or whatever, you can decide to only run the script on like Monday and Thursday and only do backups on Monday and Thursday because you don't need to backup every single day. I've never seen uh, a scenario where you where you update your applications and then they just take your crap afterwards. Um, so I've heavily been thinking about this. I still am using this and running my, running my updates every single day with backups every single day. But if I ever decide to go on vacation or something like that, um, I'm probably going to stretch these out a little bit. And then I do not hide standard er uh, output or standard error. I want those to me. I want to see everything. But we can go ahead and now copy this and then add this into another one. And then you can change this schedule to be like a, something like this. And then take out... So run this at 04, and then take out the backups. So then you're only syncing, updating, and then pruning. Uh, because again, you don't need a backup every single day, but this is totally up to you. It's however you want to do it. So yeah. And then if you want to receive emails after you get done running your cron job, or after it gets done running at whatever schedule you put it on, you come up to the alerts, you click on this cogwheel, and then you hit the email. And then from here, you'll have to type in your email information. You can do Gmail OAuth and it'll just have you like sign in and all that stuff. It's super easy. And then you'll start getting email notifications on, uh, on your cron jobs like I do. All right, but that's it for this video. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions on anything else that I can even add to the script, I honestly don't know where to go from here. I felt like I've added everything that I could. I can even think of another problem that can be solved by uh, adding it to the script and I don't want to add like too many things to this it's already what 193 lines long if you guys do have anything to add or anything like that just let me know and then um, again if you know how GitOps and case statements and stuff like that works 
let me know because I'm, I'm still trying to figure out how to run these commands in a uh, certain order no matter which argument you place in your command line. I'll go ahead and leave my Discord in the description or the comments. And yeah, have a good rest of your day.